I have never felt quite as hollow before as I did upon finishing Shiki. I normally don't wish to be hyperbolic, but genuinely by the end of my watch I was filled head to toe with a barren void. While Shiki is not my only experience with a more nihilistic, depressive, or tragic conclusion, it's particularly stand out in its ability to strip me of my hope based solely on how comparable every depraved action is to human nature in general. As I see it, we as human beings don't serve a greater purpose beyond self-preservation and will snuff out anything we perceive as a threat to that. While some of us may conjure together a more important reason for our existence, what we do in practice and have done throughout the course of human history still suggests the former to be more true. We exist to maintain our existence, nothing more. Shiki's ending is haunting because I cannot find another rational conclusion, and the conclusion it left me with was horrifying, sad, and unsatisfying. But I've seen more than the occasional detractor suggest there is a flaw in the story, one that ultimately suggests this ending is forced, and that the moral ambiguity of the show does not hold up. Shiki is liked by many because it shows moral ambiguity. Let me debunk that myth. Now imagine this entire village either died or people turned into Shiki. These Shiki still need to feed on other people, and when they do, that person either dies or becomes Shiki. Now this will spread like an epidemic. How long do you think human population will last, as more and more people will turn into Shiki as others die? The Shiki population will grow with increasing rate, and the human population will decrease with increasing rate. Soon there will not be enough humans to feed all Shiki, hence Shiki will die out. The conclusion is simple, that Shiki are unnatural as they dig their own grave. Either way, they are doomed for extinction. Humans have more a right to live than Shiki. There is no moral ambiguity here. The Shiki's desire is simply not to starve to death. Is that truly such a sin? Does it warrant a stake through the heart? To even analyze a species' right to exist and critiquing the logic of their existence while ignoring the fact that they've managed to live on up until this point just places one in the shoes of the humans in the story. The logic is not entirely flawed, but is selfish to even suggest as it places the priorities of the one making the claim before the Shiki. From the human perspective, there is no reason for the Shiki to live, and their existence directly threatens humanity. So yes, from that human perspective, there is no right for Shiki to exist. But drawing attention to this detail and how Shiki operate misses the point in what makes the series morally ambiguous. Humans are willing to take other lives to preserve their own. What is acceptable for humans is not sanctioned for Shiki. Where is the fairness in that? If anything, pointing out that humans have more justifiable reasons to kill the Shiki directly showcase what the actual problem is. Our need for self-preservation exceeds the need of other species. The Shiki do not choose to be Shiki, the Shiki are simply transformed against their will. When the Shiki rise back up, they have no choice but to continue living on and create more Shiki to build a society. If they don't do that, they simply die. They can't win. Their life means murder. Their very existence is a sin that humanity can't bear. But I remain unsure. Their sins are ours. Asking who has more a right to exist begs the question of what benefit that existence brings beyond preserving their own species. In both cases, neither the human or Shiki have a leg to stand on. Both only carry out their actions to simply continue existing. This is the conflict. This is why both the humans and the Shiki are justified in their actions. I point this out not only to focus the point back on what the show is actually saying, but also because this criticism... Uh, it unsettles me. It reminds me that we are very hesitant to sympathize if it means our asses are on the line. Not to suggest we should roll over and die when something threatens our livelihoods, but our attempt to rationalize precedes any consideration. It's selfish, but hauntingly so, it's also necessary. What I get from this criticism is someone missing the point because they already side with the humans. But if one would ask the humans what right they have to live over the Shiki, all the humans can offer is a longer existence than the Shiki would have. We as human beings aren't necessarily doing much good for anything beyond ourselves. We're destroying the environment considerably. We're killing off animals even though we can live off vegetation. We're creating city-destroying bombs. We're rapidly overpopulating, thus resulting in an exponential growth of these problems and more. So what right do we have to exist? We did not choose to be human, we are simply born human. 
When we are brought into this world, we instinctually understand that we are the most important. Even by the time we're old enough to question morality, it's naturally encoded in our mind and body to survive. Had some otherworldly beings come down to us and explain our mere existence threatens them, well, fuck them, right? We kill because it's the only way for us to live. That has always been the only reason. What makes Shiki haunting by its end is the realization that this is a very human story, that this is a logical conclusion, that the actions portrayed are justifiable, and that it's ultimately horrifying. What haunts me about Shiki isn't simply that humans are selfish and horrible, but that our survival depends on it. That our continued existence will only bring suffering to not only ourselves, but to those we may share our existence with. Scenes such as the townspeople singing as they drag up Shiki corpses and bundle them up are directly comparable to our treatment of livestock. The rationale to dehumanize Shiki is compared to how we handle times of war. And the need to use logic in an attempt to see them as subhuman is no different than engaging in ethnic pseudosciences. What happens in Shiki and what happens in this criticism is a snapshot of human history. A history that repeats itself with no signs of ending because for as long as humans exist, we will seek to self-preserve. By any means necessary. <laughs>